that the, the very first experience uh, was, and I don't talk about this very often, but you ask, so I will. Uh, I was electrocuted when I was five years old and burned severely, burned all my eyebrows, my eyelashes, all, all, I still have scars on my arms from it. Uh, obviously I lived. And in those days, the doctor used to come to the house in, in Missouri. I was in Northern Missouri. It was in broad daylight. And I remember uh, I had, I had had this jolt of electricity that shot through my body and I couldn't talk. Um, I was not really paralyzed, but I, for whatever reason, I, I couldn't speak. My mom had called a doctor. I was waiting for the doctor. And while I was waiting for the doctor in broad daylight, I began seeing in my room beings surrounding me that were helping my body to heal from, from the shock. So that experience, uh, at five years old, you don't know what to call that. But it told me, it literally shocked me into an awareness that I was not alone in the world and that there were worlds that exist that I couldn't see under normal circumstances. And the only way I could see those worlds was if I had the feeling that I had through that electrical jolt. And that experience stayed with me. And as I moved through life, I learned that that feeling, the power of, of my ability to have a feeling when I wanted to have a feeling, to be able to, to feel that connection and communicate if I needed to communicate with whatever those beings were. Coming from the dysfunctional family, um, I, uh, security and safety was a big thing. And I, I began studying martial arts really early in my life. And one of my first martial arts experiences in the dojo, we had three minutes of meditation. And my instructor, he stopped right at three minutes. And I said, I was in meditation. And I said, can we do this a little bit longer? <laughs> I remember he looked at me. He said, son, he said, this is a karate class. If you want meditation, you're in the wrong place. But it taught me then to go seek out teachers. And there, in the U.S., meditation in, in the 1960s was considered to be a cult, as, as, yeah. was, as was yoga. It, we, they didn't think about it the way we do today. So I had to seek these things out. And I began putting all of this together through the meditations. I could have the feeling that I had when I was younger and I could, I could commune. I, I was never directed by other worlds, but I felt that I could commune and when I had questions about what was right or wrong in my life, I had a place to go. And what I would call, what I personally would call a very strong soul compass. And that soul compass was with me all through the 60s. It was a good, it was a good time to have a soul compass. Uh, and uh, I was in my first band when I was 14 years old. You know, we were playing, it was illegal for me. I was only 14 and we were playing in clubs. And my soul compass guided me to enjoy the music, but it guided me into safety when it came to all the excess that was happening with my bandmates. Some of them died from, uh, you know, from the excess of the 60s. So the, all this to say wasn't a single experience. It was a series uh, and a progression from early in life of knowing that there are worlds that we're simply not taught about in our society that I'm related to that are with me, places to go for knowing and for knowledge and for comfort and solace and times of loss uh, and deep hurt, which comes from a dysfunctional alcoholic family. And, um, um, and also guided me into, you know, music was a powerful refuge for me, as was science. Those were my, my two, four, science, nature, and music were my forms of, of refuge. And I, if I'm honest, I would have to say they probably still are today in, in different ways. So those fundamental principles followed me in, uh, and I learned to access them in more adult ways through, through my life. But there was not like a single transcendental moment where my life made this quantum leap from boom, one thing to another. It was this progression. Long answer to a short question. <laughs> no, no, no. It kind of sounds like it happened at five. I mean, you've been obviously, you don't collect as much information as you have and as much awareness as you have. And um, 
Would you even say that perhaps you, you know, I definitely would subscribe to the idea that we come into this world and we have amnesia of where we came from and what we are. And I think that there are some that have a better, better uh, trust or level of just trusting that knowing or unknowing in this life. And Mm -hmm. so maybe there was something that either came in from the beginning or happened at five years old. But I think, you know, having an experience with beings is an extremely powerful one. And the fact that you remember it means that it means something. Well, by the time the guy, the doctor got to the house, uh, I didn't really need that. I mean, I don't know how much detail you want. They were, I mean, they were literally, they were, they were very tall. They were in the room with me. They were in one at my feet and my bed this is the mind blower for me. My bed was in the corner up against the wall and one of those beings was standing behind me. And I, I remember thinking, how can there be somebody standing behind me? There's a wall there, you know? And that, I mean, that's the way the mind works. So uh, I think we do come in with uh, a little bit of a blank slate to some degree. And what I know is from a very young age, you know, I, I, do, I love the people of this world so much. Danica, uh, and and I love this world, and I've always wanted to be able to contribute in some way, whatever time I have in this world. And as a kid, you do that in the way you know how to do as a kid. And you know, as a teenager, you know how to you do it. You know, for me, it was through music as, as a teenager, and and now it's uh, through information and knowledge to help us to have. There's so much fear. I mean, I believe most people are really good people. That's my experience. And when we go into fear, we can become the the most horrible beings because we will stop at nothing to feel safe and defend ourselves from what we fear. And you can try to impose change upon that fear. It doesn't work. And I think we, we have seen that in the world. To me, the fundamental key is to alleviate the fear, and you do that through, and we've all heard this, knowledge is power. The better we know ourselves, the less we will fear. 